Hey, what's up? It's Ben from Wad Prep, and in this video, I'm going to teach you the ultimate guide to thrusters for CrossFit. So if you're a CrossFitter or someone who does functional fitness, I'm going to teach you all of the standards, modifications, common mistakes that people make, and even some advanced tips on this movement right here, and that is the barbell thruster. So the standards of movement of a barbell thruster is the bar starts on your shoulders, you squat below parallel, and then end with the bar completely locked out overhead. So if that's the movement you wanna get better at, thrusters, you're in the right place, and let's get into it. So why do thrusters in the first place? Thrusters are actually one of my favorite barbell movements. Honestly, if there was one movement that I could pick to be fit for the rest of my life, if I could just do one exercise, it'd probably be thrusters. That's because thrusters require hip and ankle mobility, they require good thoracic spine mobility, so being able to squat with an upright position, and they also involve shoulder mobility. So all those mobilities aside, there's also core strength, overhead strength, leg strength. It's a great combination of mobility and strength, and oh, by the way, it's gonna make you really, really tired. So you can get a great cardio workout doing a heck of a lot of thrusters. If you don't believe me, then try the workout Fran. But anyway, let's talk first more specifically about the standards of movement for a thruster. This isn't a standard necessarily, but when I'm picking up the bar, I always suggest put your feet in a, in a squatting position because there is a squat involved. There's no reason to start with your feet narrow and then have to widen them out. So start with your feet in a squatting position that's generally just outside your hips or underneath your shoulders. Next, you're gonna get the bar to your shoulders. That's a power clean. That's for another video. So from here, what we're going to do is squat below parallel. So I want you to look at the crease of my hip. The crease of my hip ends up below the top of my knee. And then from here, I directly drive out of the bottom with power and press overhead. That was a very th slow thruster. So let me do like three or four reps just to show you what it looks like at full speed. Okay, so that's a thruster. Let's talk about the most common faults that I see a lot of athletes making when they're doing thrusters. There's a ton of different mistakes that you can make, but I'm gonna go over the top five mistakes. So the first mistake that I wanna talk about is what I call a bad rack, and there's a few different instances of this. So the way that we start a thruster is in what's called the front rack position. So that means the barbell is racked on my shoulders. The, the bar is actually resting the majority of its weight on my shoulders as I do my squat and then go overhead. But the problem a lot of people make is that when they have the bar on the rack, the first instance of a bad rack is they're not even letting the bar sit on their shoulders. So here's a good rack position. This is where the bar is actively sitting on my shoulders. You can actually see I can take my hands off the bar because all the weight is sitting on my shoulders. A lot of people do this thing where they just kind of like pick the barbell off their shoulders and they'll squat with the barbell not touching their shoulders. Whew. Just doing one rep of that is absolutely exhausting. So remember, the bar needs to be sitting on your shoulders and you should just have your hands on the bar. The next thing that people tend to do is, let's say they actually do get the bar on their shoulders, they have this bad habit of letting their elbows drop. So if my elbows are pointing down and I go to squat, what can happen? Boom, my elbow hits my leg or my knee and then I have a broken wrist and we don't want that. So make sure again, we have the bar rested on our shoulders, we try to drive our elbows up so that when we squat, my elbows aren't anywhere near touching my knees. Okay, Ben wants me to have the bar on the shoulders. Okay, check. Then they want me to get my elbows up as high as possible, check. Then they end up in this position where the bar is resting on their fingertips. How am I supposed to go overhead with the bar resting on my fingertips? Now what you want, don't let the bar sit on your fingertips. So what you need to do as an athlete is find a happy medium. How can you keep your fingers on the bar? So how can you keep at least four fingers ideally underneath the bar in the front rack position. How can you keep a majority of the weight resting on that rack of your shoulder and not putting all the weight and pressure on your elbows, on your elbows and on your wrists? The goal is to get as much weight on the shoulders, go into the squat and then drive up and overhead. So the second common mistake that I see athletes make is they have a bad stance. So yeah, they might have a good rack. Maybe the rack is in, in great position, but for whatever reason, they have a bad stance. So the bad stance could either be your hands or your feet. More often than not, I see people pick up the bar, like so, and they have their feet super narrow. So they're like, all right, I'm in my good front rack position. And then they try to squat, and they're just like, what is going on here? 
It's because their feet aren't in a squatting position, okay? So remember, in order to have a good stance, I want my feet wide enough so that I can execute a squat very easily. So for me, that's feet underneath the shoulders or, or outside the hips, and then that's a good stance. Don't ever try to do a thruster with a stance that's super narrow. It's gonna be way harder, or I don't know why you would. You probably don't want a sumo stance either. So have your feet in a good squatting position, whatever that means for you, and that's a great start. And then next, I've also seen people where rather than having a, a rack position where their, their hands are outside their shoulders, for whatever reason, they like to have their hands super narrow. I can tell you right now, this is not an efficient way to do a thruster. Like, I can't put the bar on my shoulders. Or I've also seen people try to do thrusters way, way out here. And I can tell you right now, that's not what you want to do. This is an awkward thruster. In order to have a good stance, remember, feet just outside the hips or underneath the shoulders, whatever, good squatting stance with your feet. And then you want a good stance or grip width with your hands. For me, it's just outside the shoulders. That is the perfect stance for a thruster. Common mistake or common fault number three is not using your legs. Quick quiz, what's stronger, your legs or your arms? Your legs are always stronger for almost everyone. I'm sure there are a few exceptions, but generally speaking, when it comes to a standard barbell thruster, we wanna be using our legs as much as possible. So the common mistake that I see is rather than driving from the legs, hips, and then arms, which is what we want for a thruster, they'll do something where they start pressing too early or where they rely too much on their shoulders and, and arms. So here's what a bad all arms or no legs thruster might look like. So they have it in their front rack, maybe they squat, and then as they start standing, they start pressing overhead. Whew. Can you guys see how the bar's leaving my shoulder way too early? Ugh. That's a strict thruster, we don't want that. I, I wanna use as much momentum and legs as possible. So instead, what I suggest doing is thinking about it in this order. It's legs, hips, arms. Watch it one more time, I'm kind of doing it slow on the way down, but explosive on the way up. So legs, hips, arms. In order to get the most power and the most efficiency out of your thruster, use your legs, drive out of that front squat as hard as you can, extend your hips, squeeze your butt cheeks, your glutes, when you do a lot of thrusters, you should have nice sore glutes the next day. And then to finish the movement, you press overhead. Don't rely too much in your arms. Make sure you get your legs involved. Common fault number four is not breathing, or at least not breathing properly. I know it seems ridiculous, but oftentimes whenever a barbell or heavy weight is involved in a functional fitness or crossfit workout, there's this tendency to forget to breathe when we're under tension. When it comes to a thruster, you're under tension or you have a barbell weighing down on you and you're moving pretty much the whole time. So a lot of people just forget to breathe. So even without the barbell, I'm just gonna demonstrate a couple reps here of what I see a lot of times in athletes. They'll pick up the bar, take a breath, and then they'll just hold their breath the whole time. Hold their breath the whole time, hold their breath the whole time, maybe get a little bit of a breath here, and then they're back down and they're back to holding their breath. So they get burned out really quickly. Or on the opposite side of the spectrum, I've seen people where they're like they're hyperventilating and not actually doing a real true breath. So generally speaking, and we do have a full video about this on YouTube and on Facebook, but generally speaking, I like to breathe out as I'm pressing up. So, and then I breathe in at the lockout or as the bar starts to come down. So watch it again. So I'm, I'm obviously finishing the squat. I breathe out and then breathe in. So let me do a few reps and I'm gonna to try to exaggerate it for you and obviously we'll, we'll have some labeling on the screen here. So I was exaggerating a little bit there but you can see I breathe out as I'm locking it out, breathe in at the top and as the bar's coming back down. For whatever reason, that seems to be the best breathing pattern. So try it on your own. You'll notice I actually wasn't breathing during the squat. Some people do find that effective. You need to try it on your own. The bottom line is don't overlook breathing. Make sure, make sure you pay attention to it in the middle of your workout. You might find the perfect breathing pattern to help you maximize your thruster efficiency. So common fault number five that I wanna talk about, it's also a pet peeve of mine, is what we'll call the lazy lockout. This is when you're either not locking out your elbows all the way, or maybe you are locking out, but for whatever reason, you're, you're not letting your head stay neutral. 
kind of pushing the barbell in front or looking up. So I'll just show you a couple different versions of lazy lockouts, and then we'll talk about how to fix them. So here's version number one. This is the bent arm lazy lockout, and I see this all the time in competition, folks. Don't like it. Looks something like this. So hopefully you can notice what's going on, but obviously I'm not, I'm just getting the barbell over my head, but I'm not locking it out. And that's a no rep. Another thing that happens when it comes to lazy lockouts is this weird keeping your head back thing. So like this. So maybe, I, maybe I'm getting arm extension, but the bar's in front of my body and my head's back. No reps, folks. Remember, the standards of movement, elbows need to be fully locked out, bar needs to be centered over my body. So when I stand up, I get full hip extension, full knee extension, elbows locked out, centered over my body. That is a proper thruster. Don't allow yourself to have a lazy lockout. If you feel like you are, one thing you can think about is driving your head through the window. I don't want you to drive your head through where you're straining your neck or doing anything crazy and leaning forward. But just think about it. as that bar passes your face, just kind of push your head through. <clears throat> Drive through, push through, push through, push through. So you can see I'm not overextending. I'm not, you know, really <laughs> trying to drive my head very th far through. I'm just pushing into the window. So let's move on to modifications to help you get better at thrusters. Let's say based on everything we've already covered, you're like, hey, I can't figure out how to fix these faults. I can't meet the movement standards. What do we do about it? We're gonna talk about a couple different things that you can do really quickly to improve your thruster performance and meet the standards. So number one, let's say a workout calls for 95 pound thrusters. That's what I've been using over the course of this video. If that's too heavy for you, tip number one to modify is to scale the weight. So a 65 pound thruster is gonna be a lot easier to navigate through the full movement standards than a 95 pound thruster. Just like 95 pounds is easier than 135 pounds. So first tip is to scale your weight down and that's gonna help you increase your range of motion and increase your efficiency so that you can get the stimulus you want in the workout. Tip number two is to scale the ROM, scale the range of motion. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I like to say scale the range of motion if you can't get to it. What I'd rather see you do is to do three quarters of a thruster perfectly then try to do a whole thruster and it's an absolute train wreck, okay? So the way that we can do this is we can simply shorten the squat or let's say you have issues locking out the barbell overhead, you can always allow yourself not to get your elbows locked out. I know I said that was a fault and it might've been cheating earlier, but if you can't meet the movement standards due to a specific injury or an immobility, it's your goal or it's your job to make sure that we're always bumping up against your limits. So if you can't lock it out to here and you have a, you know, you can get the barbell here, Maybe scaling down the weight allows you to get that full lockout. So that'd be a great example of scaling the, the weight down. But let's say no matter how, maybe even just with a PVC pipe, you're still like, I can't do it. Then you can scale down the range of motion and do thrusters to as far as you can get them. Ideally, we can take this a step further and change from a barbell thruster and add different elements. So you can do kettlebell thrusters. You can do single arm thrusters. You can do dumbbell thrusters. One thing I've noticed is that when athletes have a hard time locking out their elbows above their head, all of a sudden, if we switch to a single arm dumbbell, then they can get that full lockout. So that could be a great way to scale and allow yourself to actually achieve that range of motion and achieve the movement standards. That's what's so cool about CrossFit and functional fitness is it's infinitely scalable. Another thing you can do, and I've mentioned this in our ultimate guide to front squats, is you can take a little plate, like a five pound plate or two and a half pound plate or, or wear weightlifting shoes to rise your heel up. So if you're having trouble with that squat depth, it could be an ankle flexion or dorsiflexion issue. So what that means is you're having a hard time getting all the way down in the squat, lift your heels up rather than actually being on your tippy toes, put a pair of, of plates or, or wear a pair of weightlifting shoes. And what that does is that puts you in a better position to actually do the squat. And you might notice that getting that full range of motion is easier. And then the last thing that I wanna say, I don't do this very often, but it works really well with snatches, like squat snatches, but it also works well here with thrusters, is especially for beginners, split the dynamic movement into its different parts. So split the thruster into a front squat and a push press, or even a front squat and a strict press. So what that means is instead of like trying to, you know, pat your head and rub your belly and do all kinds of things, 
All that extra movement can make things confusing for people, especially beginners, that's totally fine. Break it into simpler movements. Do a front squat, pause, take a breath, and then press the bar overhead. You can do that in, in exchange for thruster reps, and while it's not technically RX, it's not to the movement standards, it still allows you to get the same stimulus. So again, if you're having a hard time actually doing unbroken thrusters and, and it's just really throwing off your rhythm, then in the middle of the workout, just ask your coach or you can do this for yourself. Just say, all right, instead of three thrusters, I'm gonna do a front squat and then I'm gonna ah, press overhead, one. And then I'll do a front squat, Whew, take a breath, press overhead, there's two and Three. So while those technically aren't thrusters, sometimes breaking the movement into its individual pieces is a great way to get the same stimulus and to practice. Eventually, you'll be able to take that and get rid of that pause in between and turn it into a real thruster. For the final and fourth part of this video, I want to talk about advanced thruster tips. So if you're someone who you've done a lot of thrusters, you've done Fran multiple times, you're ready to take thrusters to the next level, these advanced tips will help you move quickly and more efficiently in workouts. So, Advanced tip number one is squat your first rep, or more accurately, clean your first rep. So rather than doing what I've done in this video, which is step up to the bar, pick it up to the shoulders, reset my feet, and then do my thruster, combine all of those movements into what's called, or what some might call, a squat clean into your first rep. Here's what it looks like. So let's say I just came off the pull-up bar. I want to get into my reps right away. Instead of picking the barbell up, all right, it's time to thruster. And then doing thrusters, instead of that, here's what I want you to do. I want you to come up, step up, drop directly into it. One, two, and three. I know it seems like a slight difference, but just taking that first rep and making it really fast, getting into that squat right away, will save you a lot of seconds over the course of a long workout. So advanced tip number two is something that I didn't know about until I studied Rich Froning, and that's Rest at the top. So it's kinda, it kind of seems silly, but if the barbell's not resting on the ground, obviously this is, this is the ultimate form of resting during thrusters, is the barbell's not on you. But when you have the bar, I find it, and obviously lots of high-level competitors, because they do this all the time, they find it easier to rest with the barbell here rather than here. For a lot of you, this isn't gonna be the case. This is an easier position than overhead. However, when we're actually doing thrusters, like if you go do a set of 15 thrusters, you might find that pausing just for a slight, not a full second, like we're talking like a quarter second, half second, at the top of your rep is the perfect amount to get that full breath cycle and then like accordion into your next rep. Rather than doing a thruster, bringing it to your shoulders, taking a couple breaths, and then going down into your next thruster, dropping into your shoulders, taking a couple of breaths, going down to your next thruster, try to actually rest for a half second at the top. Here's what it looks like. I'm gonna show you the good version. This is, this is what I see a lot of athletes like Rich Froning and Matt Frazier do. Clean that first rep. Do you see the slight pause at the top? It's very slight, but it's just like, I'm getting to lockout, pause for a quarter second, and then back into the next rep. That is so much more efficient than resting here, which I see a lot of beginners to do. They'll hold on their shoulders, squat overhead, back to the shoulders, that's inefficient. So try resting stacked at the top. As long as your shoulder mobility is great, you might actually find that the best way to string together big sets of thrusters. So the third and final advanced tip is what I would call speed reps. You're taking that pause that I just mentioned and throwing it out the window. I'll be honest with you, I don't use this particular strategy very often. The only time I would use speed reps is if it was a very fast workout. A workout like Fran, where for me, I can do Fran unbroken, no problem. Not everyone can do that, and I understand that. So for most people watching, ignore this completely, please. But if you're an advanced athlete, or if the barbell's light enough, you can literally lock it out and then pull the barbell down into your next rep. That's how people get the world record Fran times, is because they're actively pulling the barbell down, rather than waiting for gravity to accelerate the barbell down at however many meters per second squared, which I've already forgotten, thanks, high school. <laughs> when you get to the top, rather than letting gravity bring the barbell back down, which seems plenty fast enough, people, advanced athletes, will literally pull the bar down. You see how much faster those are. So if you have a really light barbell, or 
shorter sets of thrusters that you need to fly through, speed reps could be the answer. Actively pull the bar down from the top. It's even faster than gravity, and your thrust will be faster at the same time. All right, I know that we covered a lot of ground in today's video. We talked about movement standards, we talked about common mistakes, we talked about different remedies for mobility problems and different modifications that you can do. And then we also talked about some advanced tips. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down and let me know why. But ultimately, I would love it if you smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and then leave me a comment below and let me know one thing that you learned from this video. If there was one thing that you said, oh my gosh, that's a great tip, write it down below so that other people can learn from what you've learned. Last but not least, remember here at WOPRF, we have tons of free training. If you are looking to get better at all kinds of CrossFit skills, Check the links in the comments below or the link in the description or just go to wadprep.com and we have tons of free training material that I'd love to send you. Again, completely free, no strings attached to help you get better at things like muscle ups and double unders and handstand walks and handstand push ups and all the other movements in this awesome sport. And then if you are someone who's like, hey Ben, like I'm working on my barbells, I'm working on, on all these different movements, I don't know if I'm, if I'm doing it right. If you want to get coached by me and the rest of the Wad Prep team and you're over the age of 35 or 35 years old, or older, then come join Wad Prep Masters. It's where Wad Prep athletes go to get coached. It's basically like we've taken all the amazing pieces of a CrossFit gym or of a box, and we've tried to recreate that in a completely online environment that's safe, and you can do it from anywhere in the world you have an internet connection. So come join us inside of Wad Prep Masters. We have programming, daily programming, regardless of how much equipment you have. We have different levels of programming from elite down to people who are trying to learn how to go from scale to RX. We also have amazing seminars. We have things like, like this video. We, we have videos like this that we produce exclusively for WADPREP Masters, live coaching calls, all kinds of stuff. So go to wadprep.com slash wadprep masters, or obviously, again, the links will be below, and I hope to see you on the inside of our best coaching community. I'll talk to you next week. Peace.